Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is um, really intended to be the second video of a, of a multi video series uh, where we explore structures and how to create them and really utilize them in Ida Pro. So if you haven't checked out the first video, I'm going to add a link here to the playlist and to the video. So uh, it would be great to check that out. There is, um, you know, definitely some continuity, some concepts are going to build throughout this series. So it will be helpful to go back and review that earlier video. Uh, of course, if you don't have time or don't want to, um, there should be enough here where it, it really has enough of the concepts and, and what we're going to discuss that can stand alone as well. Now, um, I'm just going to pick up where we left off then for the sake of time, where the last video we discussed the structure here, um, creating the structure, um, adding it to our IDA database, and then applying the members to the layout. Where we're going to pick up in this video then is the next structure. Now, for these demonstrations, I have a sample file, sample C program that's available on my GitHub. Again, I'll refer you back to that previous video in order to find the location there. But if you just search for my GitHub repository, you'll find a repo called Learning Reverse Engineering. This second structure then, or at least the second um, instantiation of this structure, it's the same align structure that we discussed in the previous video. That is, there's four members, a four byte int, a two byte short, and then two one byte chars. So an eight byte, eight bytes in total for this structure. The difference here is that this first structure definition, we, I utilize malloc in order to allocate a region of memory to then house that structure. The second one, the second instantiation is um, gonna be stack based. So you can see that this is going to be a stack based structure. Now, um, the first thing that happens is the structure then is defined as a local variable in main. And this annotation here, the, the uh, curly brackets with the zero, what this is going to do, and you're going to see this in the disassembly, is that's going to zero out the memory before that structure is used. So just a good practice in you know making sure that whatever memory you're about to utilize for any variables or, or structures or whatever, uh, that that is, it is zeroed out, that you've kind of taken control of that. Because had you not done that, there could be leftover data um, and it can lead to a, a, a some you know, issues in code, uninitialized variable usage and such. From here, um, then we're just going to access each member. And you'll notice that the how to access the members is a little bit different in terms of the syntax. The, the dash um, greater than sign or the arrow to access those members, to dereference those, uh, that location of memory to store data, whereas a stack variable, we're just using the dot operator. Um, very similar to the previous, I'm going to exercise every member. So every member is going to be assigned a value. Again, this is very much for demonstration purposes. This isn't always going to be the case when um, analyzing code, reversing malware in the wild. Um, but this makes it easier for us to understand these, these concepts and, and, uh, and again, explore the memory layout. So then each one of these members will be initialized with a value. And they're just going to, that's just going to be done in order, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so let's explore this in Ida. Uh, going to look at this in the disassembly window. And uh, I said this is where that, that next definition begins because we do have the XOR, EDX, EDX. And then you can see the EDX, so when we XOR anything with itself, that results in zero. So whatever was in EDX is now going to be zero. So the EDX register will contain a zero value. And moving that, you know, that value then, that zero value into VAR 14 and VAR 10, that's what's zeroing out that memory. So these three instructions essentially map up to this statement here. Now, this is where you really will first um, recognize the, the, the primary difference and that now we're dealing with local uh, stack variables. So we have, you know, Ida recognizes this as two D word values, two four byte values, var 14 and var 10. And you don't have a call to, to malloc. You don't have that dynamically allocated memory and in this case, um, it's maybe a little less obvious to recognize that this is a structure rather than just a series of local variables. So let's continue to analyze uh, these var 14, var 10. So that just zeroes that out. We still maybe don't know exactly what's going on yet. So we will continue. This next move is into var 14, 2a. Uh, and that's just 42. You know, look at our source code here. Uh, the first member, the value that I used to initialize that member, right? So we know then at var 14, this is a, a four byte or a D word value. 
and it's just being initialized with 42. So even though this is the first member of the structure, this is the beginning of the structure, it, it's, it's a, I think, a little bit harder to identify that. Okay, so the next inst instruction we have, uh, we're moving into EAX hex one FF, and now we can see that that is that value, or at least the the, the lower two bytes of that register AX is moved into var ten. All right, so that's really the instruction that handles populating the second member. So you know, var ten, var fourteen, we can see we have four bytes of of displacement or four bytes of difference. Um, so that again sort of Kind of confirms or reaffirms that that first member is four bytes. Um, we only know, or, or we can start to kind of gather that this is only a two byte or short because of, again, the use of the AX register. And then the fact that in the disassembly here, Ida is saying, okay, at this location, VAR 10, we're only going to be able to reference a word's worth of data. So the two bytes itself. This again, looks like a local variable. So it's it's not straightforward that this is all part of the same structure. Uh, but when we get to the last two instructions, now we're seeing offsets relative to var 10. So var 10 plus two, var 10 plus three, and 61 and 62. So those are just the arbitrary char, you know, byte values that I'm moving into that location. Okay, so, so that's it for that second structure and the data that was initialized there. Um, you know, again, it, it might be, you know, this is going to be a tell here using these offsets relative to uh, a base location that likely they're related. In this case, it looks like they are a member, but we don't necessarily know or, or can draw a cr direct connection to that VAR 14. So this is where it maybe takes a little bit of time experience in working with structures, recognizing structures, and then um, adding the context that's necessary to, to kind of pull them back together. Uh, does it really matter? Uh, does it really matter if you identify this as a structure or if you just treat it as a bunch of independent variables? I don't know. Um, it depends, I think, on just how much analysis that you're doing. There are, there are times that I'm going through uh, looking at code and I really just need to understand what the data represents and how it's being utilized. And so taking that extra time to create the structure and map the members isn't always necessarily a, a, a valuable use of my time. There's also a lot of cases where you know, identifying a structure, especially if it's a standard structure. So standard structures then help you to better fill in the, the dots to, to add that context around your analysis. That can be quite helpful. So um, we already have the structure defined over here. We have the int, the short, and the chars, the two chars. And so what we can do now is we can actually um, apply that structure to this, to this region of, of, of memory. So again, you know, whether we just leave these as locals and start to rename them, um, in this case, we, we know it's a structure. So we want to apply that knowledge to the disassembly. So you can right click on any of these local variables and that'll take you to the stack view. And I think this is probably the quickest and, and most uh, complete way of doing this. Now we have var 10 and var 14. So you can see these are two D word values. Right, so that's the, the eight bytes. So that lines perfectly with our structure. And if you, I'm going to right click, you have the struct var option, right? Struct var dot, 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 or alt Q. You can select that. And now essentially what we can say is we can say, okay, this, at this variable, this local variable var 14, this begins a structure definition. All of the memory for this structure is on the stack. So let's choose our aligned structure and click okay. Now you're going to get this convert directly convert to structure warning. And the reason that Ida is giving you this warning, or at least in part, is because our structure is larger than just var 14. So Ida is basically saying, hey, if you apply this structure var 14 end, possibly all over parts of var 10 or other, however, however many bytes I'm going to consume in order to map this structure. So in this case, we've done the analysis. We know it's eight bytes. It's just going to get var 14, var 10 that will leave this int Z and this var eight and everything else alone. So I'm gonna say yes. Let's rename this now to our, not a, not a padded, but an aligned structure. We'll call this um, zero two, just because now we've moved on to the second. And with that, if you hit the escape key, we'll navigate back to the disassembly view and you'll see now all of those members are are, are populated and the offsets are populated. It understands 
the use of this local stack space based off of our structure definition. So it really now added that same context, that same clarity that we had previously. Okay, um, the only other thing that is maybe a bit of a gotcha here is uh, where is the corresponding code in the disassembly view? You can see it's not there. We have a call to malloc, which is our first structure. And then we have this call to malloc and that defines our second structure, uh, but this is missing. And so what you will get from time to time is that we have the disassembly here. We're obviously looking at it, we just analyzed it, but uh, the decompiler might decide that, hey, this, this code's never used, so therefore I'm just going to optimize it out and not display it to you because it doesn't do anything, it doesn't have any impact on the, on the program, at least it thinks that, and so it's just not relevant to show here. Uh, so you may get that from time to time, uh, why it, it can be helpful to check the disassembly when working with the decompiler, but uh, you know, in this case, we still were able to perform the analysis, and uh, and so it, it worked out okay. I would I would speculate that there's a way to tell the decompiler to show all of it, but uh, I don't know offhand. So if you know offhand before I get a chance to do the research and maybe discuss it in a future video, please feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, that's really all I have for this video. So in the next video, then we'll wrap up this, I guess, what's turned into a three-part series, and we'll talk about this very last structure. So we'll talk about the padded structure. Okay, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.